Hey folks, Barnaby Dixon here. So you're joining me on the journey of recreating my most well-known character, Dabchick. I have scanned him, started 3D printing him, and have considered ways that I might even enhance him. And based on the six million dollar man references that you idiots have been leaving me in the comments, you folks are keen to see that too. So we'll be looking at the first of those enhancements this week, which is the control over the feathers on Dabchick's head. Thanks for joining me. Sorry I called you idiots. I can't feel my feet. So to clarify my approach, I was sculpting by hand some details into a times two scale Dabjik head as a means of getting more detail for the scanner to pick up. But I realized what a unique opportunity this could be to create some mechanisms that would have been far too fiddly to make on the smaller head. Now Dabchik does already have some pretty intricate mechanisms, but these are made out of metal. But I'm keen in this version to 3D print as much as possible. But of course, 3D printed materials are rarely as strong as metal. So I think we will have to bump up the size of a lot of these mechanisms in order to get the strength back through size as opposed to material choice. Here's a helpful little diagram here. Now, because Dabchik is small, the interior space will have to be managed very carefully to accommodate this approach. The feathers aren't really an internal mechanism, but their exposed position could make them quite vulnerable. So bulking up certain parts of the feathers will be helpful as well. So when I worked on the Book of Dust, I discovered that a strand of 3D printer filament made for a pretty good pin part for a hinge joint. So I would slot it into the holes and melt it at either side with a soldering iron to hold it in place. And if you put a small sheet of Teflon between the soldering iron and the filament, it stops the two sticking together. Now a similar approach could be taken with Dabchik's head, uh, but it would be quite fiddly work, especially seeing as all the hinges are so close together. But if you could get a single filament to flex around the curvature of Dabchik's head, then you only need a single pin for all of those hinges. So back to the milli part again. And as I make this feather, I'm cognizant of the fact that I only wanna make one and cast the others. For this reason, I'm avoiding holes because holes will have the cast stick in the mold. So I'm just for now making an indent that will show where I need to drill the holes in the cast versions. But this gave me an idea. I thought that maybe I could use notches and bumps instead of a rod to hinge the feathers. This might make them easier to replace and if they were to be bumped from the side, they'd more likely fall out as opposed to break. The other benefit is that we no longer have to worry about the strength of the material around the hole because with this approach, there is no hole. We do, however, have to consider the flex of the feather because if we want it to be pinned in place, we have to have some initial flexibility to allow it into that place to start with. Now, I don't want to rely on the material to achieve this flexibility because I don't know what the final material is going to be yet. Uh, so I need to find a way to engineer it into the object, the flexibility that is. But this is going to change the object a lot. So at this point, I'd like to do the analog equivalent of saving my work. So I'm making a mold of this feather piece using a two part silicon that like milliput cures when you mix those two parts together. Once this cures, I remove the piece and start to engineer some flex into the object. I figure this can be achieved by making a cut down the middle to allow it to bend when being pushed into place. On occasion, there were some breaks and the way I went about fixing it was with a little piece of spring steel and a technique that a luthier friend once taught me. So I put the spring steel inside a groove that I cut across the break line. Then I filled the rest of that groove up with talcum powder then added a few drops of super glue. This cures very quickly and makes a very hard compound, I suppose. You could use milliput for this, but this would take a lot longer and I was a little bit pushed for time. When I felt the shape was good, I made another silicon cast of this feather. Now, as I mentioned, I was pushed for time, so I was keen to get all of these casts out as fast as possible. So I employed a technique that I really wouldn't recommend because of the fumes. I actually froze the uncured milliput in the mold using the liquid from compressed air. I had a few seconds to then remove each piece because it thaws very quickly, especially when being handled. And that meant that the mold wasn't out of action and I could use it for each of the subsequent feathers. The next morning, I attempted to slot these feathers in place, but two of them didn't really flex. They actually broke. Uh, so this was a bit of a pain. And also I was rethinking the design aesthetically too. The negative space in the middle made it read a little bit more like a rabbit's ear than a feather. I'm a cute little bunny rabbit. So could the flex be engineered in a different way? Lego have these claw pieces that slot over rod pieces and allow a pivot, almost like an open-ended hinge. Uh, if we were to make something like this, we'd retain that benefit of if the piece was knocked, it would fall out most likely as opposed to breaking. So I sculpted a new feather piece based on this, 
but I was keen at this point to try and figure out how this whole thing might work mechanically. So I'm doing a quick test here using thermoplastic because it hardens quite quickly and I'm threading it with a little bit of fishing line here so that when I lift up the middle feather, the other side feathers come up as well. I found that when I threaded the feather at the top, the movement was very responsive, but the excess fishing line made it look quite messy. However, when I threaded it at the bottom, the movement was a lot more sluggish, uh, even if the line was a bit more tidy. So I think some sort of midpoint would be the way to go. On the subject of the mechanism, I was able to salvage another failed 3D print for the purposes of creating a lever that would lift up that central feather, which would in turn lift up the side feathers, in theory. So I cast the new feather design and removed the old notch setup and slotted those feathers onto the new rotted hinge style design. Forgive me if I'm making this part of the process sound simple. It really was not. I saw many more breaks in the feathers. Okay, so that's just sheared off. Great. You know, the tolerances required to get this right are very, very precise. And I think the better way to approach this would be through computer-aided design. So I think I'll continue making this mechanism in Blender, but that will be next time. Uh, for now though, I was able to produce a pretty nice looking test. So let's view it as a test for now. I think it's worth asking at this point, is this overkill? And truthfully, probably a little bit. I think the feathers are a little too large and glorious looking for the depravity that is, that is dab chick. But also there's a lot of right angles around the hinge segment which look a little bit inorganic. So perhaps these could be covered with another row of feathers that don't move, just a little bit set forward from the other ones and this could also serve to block their movement so they don't go up too high when I trigger them. But if I have to journey back into the digital realm with regard to the 3D modeling, that does mean that I am going to have to face off with my arch nemesis, the stinky little goblin that is the resin printer. Fortunately, I have a legitimate Viking in my corner in the form of Wayne. He is six foot six of pure 3D printing prowess. So with his help, I may be able to tame that stinky little beast. If not, I'm gonna smash it on my patio. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. I thank you for watching. Bye bye.